Today, we are taking BART to a platform without any exits. Here, we'll change to eBART, an unusual extension with trains that are very familiar to me. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom, and I'm staying here in San Francisco, California. Now, San Francisco is a great city and has so much to offer, especially if you're into public transportation as much as I am, this place almost feels like paradise. Right where I'm standing, it's only two minutes away from the hostel I've been staying at. There's a cable car station. You can get on a historic streetcar, the Muni Metro, or BART. We're taking BART today, the Bay Area Rapid Transit, and we're gonna go all the way to Antioch. So why are we going all the way to Antioch today? Well, we're gonna say hello to an old friend of mine, and I'm gonna show you one of the weirdest, most unique features in public transportation here in the United States. Let's go down to the platforms. Powell Street really is such a cool station. It's the only station where all of the Muni Metro lines stop, plus for the BART routes, and all the classic stuff upstairs. First, I need to add some fare to my Clipper card. This rail corridor lies underneath Market Street. Here, BART and Muni Metro share a double-deck tunnel. Muni Metro uses the top floor, while BART tracks are located way at the bottom. This escalator will actually cut through the Muni platform to get to the BART platforms. Unfortunately, though both BART and Muni use the Clipper card, the fare systems are different, so to transfer between the two, you first have to go up to the concourse and walk through two separate fare gates. Now let's look at our route. We're at Powell Street, about to take the yellow line. I know that for a long time you weren't supposed to refer to the BART lines by color, but even BART now refers to their own lines by color, so that's just what I'm going to do. On the map, it kind of looks like it's all one line, right? But wait, what's this little tidbit here? Change trains at transfer platform. That sounds interesting. Let's go take a look. Embarcadero is the last station in San Francisco. After that, we take the Transbay Tube across the bay into Oakland. We're on a Fleet of the Future train, currently the only rolling stock that runs on the main BART network. I discussed these trains in more detail in my previous video on BART. Make sure to check that out. After running through Oakland, our yellow line train takes us up through the cities of Orinda, Lafayette, Walnut Creek, Concord, and Pittsburgh. The full yellow line, which originates at San Francisco airport and extends all the way to Antioch, is 62 miles or 100 kilometers long. The last nine miles form the Ebart extension that we're going to take a look at today. It took over an hour just to get from Powell Street to Pittsburgh Bay Point. BART really is an intercity network, and I just find that so cool. So the next station is Pittsburgh Bay Point, and even though the train says it's going to Antioch, actually Pittsburgh is the last stop for this BART vehicle that we're on. People who need to continue to Pittsburgh Center or Antioch, you have to transfer to a different vehicle, but that doesn't happen at Pittsburgh Bay Point. We're going to stop there, the doors are going to close, and then this train is going to move to a transfer platform where we're going to get on the e -Bart. So here's what's going on. Pittsburgh Bay Point was opened in 1996. For over two decades, this was the terminus, set up just like any other rail terminus. But then, in 2018, the line was extended to Antioch. Sort of. BART trains are electric, getting their power from a third rail. The super long trains, which can be up to 10 cars, run on broad gauge tracks. In other words, BART tracks are much wider than standard gauge tracks. 
However, this 9 mile, 14 kilometer extension is not electrified. Furthermore, it was built to standard gauge. Of course, this means that regular BART trains are incompatible with the new extension. Instead, the extension is treated as a separate service using separate rolling stock, known as eBART. The E stands for East Contra Costa County. Though they are technically two separate trains, BART doesn't really emphasize that. They look like one long yellow line on the map, and even the destination displays in San Francisco just say Antioch. But here's where it gets even stranger. We're stopping at Pittsburgh Bay Point Station now. Normally, staff might try to get any stragglers off the train at a terminus. Not here. The doors close and we keep moving. We are traveling another 0.6 miles or 1 kilometer to the Pittsburgh Bay Point Transfer Terminal. This is a station with no entrances or exits. There is no street access. Instead, it serves exclusively as a transfer point between regular BART and eBART. So now, the golden question, what trains run on the eBART line? Well, we've arrived at the secluded transfer platform, so we're about to find out. There it is on the other side of the platform. This is a GTW, built by Stadler, a Swiss company. A lot of people know Stadler for their romantic acronyms. They build trains called Flirt and Kiss. For some reason, the GTW never received a sexy name. This GTW is the old friend I was referring to. See, as many of you know, I am a Dutch person. In the Netherlands, these GTWs are everywhere. Many smaller operators use them on regional lines all around the country. When I think of regional Dutch trains, I think of the GTW. I didn't ride them every day, but I've been on them enough times that they feel very familiar. And it's that familiarity that is making them feel out of place right here. By the way, though they look different from a technological perspective, these trains are identical to the trains used on New Jersey's River Line. These trains are diesel powered and all the engines are located in this short power pack in the middle of the car. This makes the ride in the passenger compartment quieter, unless you open the door that leads to the power pack. The seats are decently comfortable, I think I prefer the ones in the regular BART trains though. It's so weird, I remember riding these through Dutch farmland. Now I'm on the same train in a highway median, on a transit system in one of the largest American urban areas. The train even sounds the exact same. I decided to get off at Pittsburgh Center Station. Looking at the signs here, we see the same thing. They say that the trains are headed to SFO, even though we just saw that the actual physical train here terminates at the transfer platform. They really try to sell this thing as the closest thing to a one-seat ride.
So one question remains, why did they do this? Why is it diesel? Why is it standard gauge? Money! Well, because the entire extension is located in Contra Costa County, they were solely responsible for funding it. Building the nine miles to BART standards would be very expensive. By making the tracks narrower and not electrifying them, they could build it for less than half the cost. Perhaps unsurprisingly, money is the reason behind this strange operation. And there, right on the other side of the transfer platform, is our regular BART train waiting to take us back to San Francisco. The transfers are timed and cross-platform, so it is really pretty easy. Though a one-seat ride might be preferable, I actually kind of like this quirky solution. It's fun for transit tourists such as myself. Ever since it opened in 2018, I've wanted to ride eBART. I'm glad I made time to do it today. It's weird, but to me it was also strangely nostalgic. I hope you enjoyed this video today. There's more San Francisco content coming, so please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.